Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host here today with Justine Espiritu. And as always, we are here on Thursday afternoons, starting at 4 o'clock. And if you want, you can join the conversation by tweeting in at at thinktechhi. Also, you can see the show afterwards on our YouTube channel, uh, HI Think Tech. Uh, Justine, why don't you go ahead and introduce who we have on the show today. Thanks, Matt. Today we have Diane Henley, who is the Senior Certification Officer and Inspector at Oregon Tilth. So we talk a lot about um, organic farms and organic standards, so we're here to get a little more background on the uh, history of those uh, standards in the U.S. and how farmers kind of gain that certification and we have Diane here to explain that to us today and get some of her own background as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Diane. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. So let's start with um, who you work for and kind of the mission of that organization and some of the services. And then we can kind of backtrack to kind of the history of the organic movement and where you guys fall into place there. Sure. Um, I work for Oregon Tilt. It's an organic certification company. It's based out of Corvallis, Oregon, but we do certification throughout the U.S., Canada, Mexico, um, fortunately out here in Hawaii, <laughs> which is great. Um, uh, Oregon Tilt's mission is to make our food system and agriculture biologically sound and socially equitable. And so our organization has kind of a certification side of things where we're dealing with policy and organic certification, and then we have an education outreach side of things where we are working with the community, working with farmers, working with processors, and kind of making that connection, helping to educate people on what organic is and why it's worth it, how it can impact our system. Mm -hmm. um, very brief history of organic food movement, um, 60s, 70s, farmers started getting kind of excited about organics and making their systems more sustainable and different companies started popping up with their own private certifications that you can be organic or you can be certified organic with TILF mm. but they were all private certifications right. and a lot of these companies started working together to make all of their regulations line up and the USDA didn't get involved until later, and in 2002, it became a USDA regulation that mm. if you want to use the word organic in the mm. US to talk about food, you have to be certified. And you can't be certified by anyone. You have to be certified by an accredited certification agency. That they have checked off as saying, yep, these guys know what they're doing. They can certify you to our standard. Um, and fortunately, Oregon Tilt was one of those players, um, and they have kind of from the get-go. They have been interested in creating a more sustainable world. Um, I've been working with TILF for four years. I've been in organic certification for nine years. Um, and throughout my, my work with TILF, I've gotten to travel a little bit and gotten kind of into the policy side of things and certification side of things. Um, I think that may have over answered your question. <laughs> no, no worries. Oh, we we that's perfect. want to hear it all. No, that's great. Um, this is a great point to kind of jump into talking about organic because there's definitely a lot of questions and people are always talking about it. And I think there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding what exactly that means. So when you're saying it's USDA certified organic, if, if I'm a, a farmer or even a, a restaurant or I want to use the term organic, What's the process, uh, let's use a farm as an example, what does that look like where they have to do to be able to legally call themselves organic? That is a great question. And actually the answer is the <laughs> same whether you are a farm mm -hmm. or whether you are a restaurant or a processor or a broker, distributor, if you want to use the word organic. You can break it up into the folks that have to be certified which is anyone who's physically handling the product where it might get contaminated. Okay. So your farm, your processor, and then you've got the folks that can voluntarily choose to get certified because they want to go that extra step. And that's where your restaurants and your brokers come into things, mm -hmm. your private label companies. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the way that the program works is every year, you're going to send in an application to your organic certifier, such as Oregon Tilt, Oregon Tilt. and say, yep, 
we want to renew our certification, we want to be certified for another year, we want to keep using the word organic, mm -hmm. we say great. And we review that application, we review their organic system plan, where for a farm you have indicated this is what we want to grow, this is the land we want to grow mm -hmm. on, here are the inputs we want to use, these are our seed suppliers, this is our fertility management plan, here's what we're doing to protect the surrounding areas, this is our whole organic plan, and this is how we're going to document it. We review it, we say, okay, yeah, that matches the regulations, we send an inspector out. Inspector shows up on site, and they're going to verify that everything you have said you're doing as a farmer matches what's going on on the land. You know, if the inspector shows up and you've got cans of Roundup everywhere and all of your <laughs> crops look burned, they're going to say, well, you might have a problem. <laughs> we start taking some notes. <laughs> Has that ever happened? Um, in, in my brief time doing farm inspections, no. Oh, okay. Good, good. <laughs> um, but the inspector is in a great position because they don't make the final decision. They're mm. just going to write notes on what they're finding. Okay. They're going to make notes on the documentation that was or wasn't available, what they saw on site, and they submit that report back to the organic certifier. So they would send it back to Oregon Tilth. Mm. And that's the point that I usually get involved, where Oregon Tilth then gives me that report. And they say, here, Diane, figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I would work with that report and with the client to figure out whether everything was going with the regulation or whether there were any problems. And if there are issues of concern or issues of areas that could be better, I'm going to communicate to that, that to them. Or if there's something that's straight up like, no, you are doing something that's not allowed, um, they would get a non-compliance. And then I'd work with them remotely, phone, email, mm. to figure out a solution. They would tell me how they were going to mitigate that non-compliance. We'd sign off on it and they would get their next year of certification. Next year, when you go through that same process again, the inspector is going to double check on those previous year issues and make sure that what they said they were going to fix it is actually happening yeah. to make sure that we are continually moving forward, that there is an improvement in their system every year. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a farm or a processor, you're going to be going through that same system of application, on-site inspection, review, and then final certification. Okay. So as a, as a farm, as a processor, there's someone every year on-site. Um, the other question that you alluded to of um, what organic means, like as a, as a consumer, mm -hmm. um, if you were to go into a grocery store and see something that's organic versus conventional, is it really worth that extra dollar? Yeah. Um, if it says organic, it means that pretty much everyone down the line from farm through processing, they've yeah. all been certified, they've all gone through the same process every year. Yeah. Um, and on the farm side of things, mm -hmm. pretty much everything is 100% organic. Mm. On the processed food side of things where you get an organic granola bar, that's when you start getting into these different levels of certification. Right. Um, where people don't, there's, there's a little bit more misinformation out there. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people that say, oh, you have to look for the USDA seal. If there's no USDA seal, it's no good. Right. That's not true. Okay. USDA seal is totally voluntary if you meet the organic or 100% organic requirements, mm -hmm. but you don't have to use it. Okay. You're just, you just have to use the word organic, mm -hmm. and that is the same. So a box of organic granola bars versus a box of granola bars with USDA seal, same thing. So if you're a farm or a restaurant and you are using the word organic, mm -hmm. but you like you said like the whole uh, supply chain of how that product got to wherever it is is not certified or hasn't gone through the process of working with a company like Oregon Tilt. What are the ramifications of that? Well, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, this should um, be good. No, it's, it's not something I deal with regularly. It doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. um, at the restaurant level, yeah. Restaurants don't have to be certified. Okay. They can choose to be certified. So if you have a restaurant and you look at the menu and it says they're using organic tomatoes, yeah. you hope they're telling the truth. Mm. Right, right. But there's no one double checking their work. Oh, so no one's... Not so at the restaurant level. Okay. At the retail level, like a, a retail labeled box of something, mm. yes. Okay. And we do internal monitoring where every year we're going out and pulling stuff off shelves and looking at the labels. Um, if you're buying a processed product, something that's in a box, mm -hmm. anything that says organic, 
If you flip it over, you're going to look at the distributor information, and underneath it, it'll say certified organic by Oregon Tilth, or one of the other 90 accredited certifiers in the U.S. Okay. And so that's, that's your first way of knowing, like, okay, this is legit. And then every year internally, one of the things we do is we pull as many things as we can just off grocery store shelves and we look for Oregon Tilth. Okay. And then we make sure that that label that's on the shelf matches the one that we have actually approved and certified. Is everything right. matching up? Is there anything dodgy going on? Nope. Okay. Yeah. Do you get um, to do some of that going in the store? We all do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, we kind of all spend some time. Everyone in grocery shops doesn't take much She's time going to take a picture. secret agent going into the stores. And do you like wear um, a disguise while you're like, <laughs> no, even though they're not there? There's, um, there's been a lot of crackdown. People care about organics. They want to be able to trust it. And so anytime um, someone sees something that they think shouldn't be there, there's a lot of communication going on internally. Mm -hmm. You can contact the NLP directly and say, this is, like, I don't think this is good. Um, on that on that note, in terms of having a seal or certification process that has credibility, who makes these standards and how often are they changed or reconsidered? So within the U.S., we have the National Organic Program. And the National Organic Program is a federal regulation. Um, it's 7 CFR 205. And it's an incredibly short and very, very dense regulation. So if you wanted to print the whole thing out and read it front to back, you know, you're looking at 40 pages. Mm. But you can spend, you know, a lifetime nitpicking it and figuring out what they mean. Yeah. Um, the NLP is, is great because it's a living regulation. It is being updated. It is being reviewed. Um, we have the National Organic Standards Board, um, which is a federal advisory board of 15 volunteers from the community. Um, they're appointed by the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, and each member is appointed for a five-year term. Five years. Okay. And there are recommendations made by the board, and that goes out for uh, community response. People can write in, they can show up in person and respond, and then the board will vote on whether or not the proposal should pass. And if it passes by a two-thirds majority, then they make the recommendation to the USDA to amend the National Organic Program regulation. Um, and what's the background of these committee members? Uh, everything. Actually, I, I was just looking at this. Um, right now we've got four who own and operate organic farms, two that are organic handling operations, one owns a retail establishment, three have expertise in areas of environmental protection and resource conservation, three represent public interest and consumer interest groups, one has experience in uh, toxicology, ecology, and biochemistry, and one is a certifying agent. So it's, it's a diverse crowd yeah. um, that are, are representing you know, the, the organic community. Um, most often what I see on those updates are there's a list of allowed substances called the national list. And if you buy that organic granola bar, that means that 95% of the ingredients are organic and the other 5% are going to be allowed on this national list of non-organic ingredients. And those ingredients are always being reviewed again every five years. We're going to take a quick 60 second break and kind of follow up on that conversation and then get into kind of the specifics of what kind of work you guys are doing here in the morning. Okay. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki. We just completed another great episode of Life in the Law. And I'm here today with Jay Fidel. Hi, Jay. Hi, Marianne. And what do we love about the law, Jay? There's so much to love about it, right? There's more to love about it all the time. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> we have to be a nation of laws. We have to be a nation of laws, and we have to be a diligent nation of law, of law, law lawyers and citizens. It's all about the rule of law, Marianne. Yes. The rule of law is alive and well and life in the law. Yes, it, yes, it certainly is. Tune in every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30 on Think Tech. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. 
and we're back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host Matt Johnson here today with Justine Espiritu. And Justine, who do we have with us today? We have Diane Henley, who is the Senior Certification Officer and Inspector at Oregon Tilt. Hi guys. <laughs> Um, I'm actually one of several senior certification officers and certification officers at TILT. There okay. are a bunch of us, and I'm one of many inspectors, both in the company, and then we also have a bunch of contract inspectors that just do inspectors for, inspections for us, so I'm, I'm one of many. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, just during the break, we were talking a little bit about um, the actual farms here in Hawaii. And so you mentioned that you guys, specifically Oregon Tilt, work with six farms that are certified organic. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about, like, what are the size of these farms? Where are they growing? Is this, are you, what are the trends with organic farming? What, what are you seeing? What's out there? Okay. Um, right now, Oregon Tilt certifies farms in Hawaii on Oahu, Maui, Big Island, and Molokai and um, one processing operation on Maui. Um, ideally, I would love it if we had more organic farms on mm. the islands, especially under tilth, so that I could <laughs> go do those inspections. Yeah. Um, my, my background is actually more on the processing side of things, and it wasn't until I moved to Hawaii that I, I noticed kind of an opportunity to help the farmers save some money. Mm. Because with that annual on-site inspection, the farmers have to pay for an inspector to come out from the mainland wow. to do those on-site inspections. And that can be very expensive when you start adding in the flights and the hotels. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of went after that and said, I can do farm inspections in Hawaii. Like, let's save them some money. So, um, you know, with the farm in o on Oahu, that's an easy, just drive up to their farm. It's a day yeah. trip. There's no flight involved. There's no hotel. Right. Um, the, the farms on the other islands, you know, it's, it's so easy. You just hop over. Um, and along that, that cost side of things, the other thing that we were chatting with, uh, about before, yeah. um, a big question I get when I chat with people about organic is, oh, it's just, it's just too expensive, you know, yeah. it's cost prohibitive, especially for a f small farm. Mm. We just, we can't afford that. And um, we're in a, a unique position right now that's fantastic. Hawaii is the first state to offer um, a, a tax... Um, Rebate? Or credit? It's a tax credit. It's a bill that got passed last year, but that didn't go into effect until I think technically December 31st of okay. last year. So this will be the first year that farms actually get to see the benefit of that. Okay. Um, and there's also a cost share program. That's mm. a federal program. That one's been going on for several years and they just renewed it again. So okay. that's still in place. And the cost share program through the federal government says we will refund you up to 75% of your certification costs okay. up to $750. Mm. So if you are a small organic farm on Oahu and your certification costs for the year were $500, mm -hmm. and then you also had to pay $500 for your organic inspection, mm -hmm. you're looking at $1,000 of organic fees for the year. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get $750 back from the federal government. Wow. And then ideally, with this new tax program, you yeah. can get the other 250 back from the state of Hawaii. Oh, that's great. Um, so your certification costs might be nothing. Um, the big difference is that with the cost share program, they're looking at inspection costs, they're looking at certification costs. Um, they're even doing transitional costs. So if you oh, okay. ha you've been a conventional farmer mm -hmm. and you want to switch to organic, even though, so during that three-year transitional period where you're not yet organic, but you're trying, mm -hmm. you can get certified transitional, and you can get those costs refunded, too. And you're saying okay. that's unique to the state program? That's the, that's the federal program. The okay. thing that's unique about the state program is that they will also cover the cost of um, machines that you need to buy, or equipment that you need, supplies that you need. As part of the transition? As, um, as part of your organic program. Oh, okay. Um, so as, as a, an ongoing organic farmer, mm. you can apply to get refund back. Okay. Um, this is the first year that it's been in effect, though, so I don't know how it's going to actually yeah, look. I don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, I just well, hopefully know it means that you're going to be a lot busier. Um, that would be great. <laughs> I would love it if we had more farms and processors certified organic through Oregon Tilth on the islands. Um, I think that a, a 
big misconception. People hear Oregon Tilt and they assume, oh, they just do certification right, in Oregon. Right, but in Oregon. No, we do Canada, we do Mexico, we oh, do wow. the U.S. Um, we're all over the place. And I have a question kind of on your uh, description, the idea of the transition. Yeah. And you can say if this is about the, the Hawaii farms or in general, do you see farms that are applying for certification, are they usually in transition or is it usually new farms that are kind of starting off as That's organic? That's a great question. And I don't do the initial farm reviews, so I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I would guess that typically farms are reaching out to an organic certifier earlier on and saying, what do we need to do to become organic? And we have the transitional program where we can talk them through it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they have just bought the land and they know they want to be organic and they're kind of at square one. And if they have land use affidavits going back three years showing that nothing mm -hmm. prohibited was applied, yeah. then they can move forward with organic right away. Oh, okay. Or maybe they say, oh, you know, we bought it from this other farmer. His right. records show that they applied something one year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. You've got two more years of transition. You okay. can get certified during that period. Mm -hmm. And you can start getting into the requirements of, okay, what do I need to be organic? You've got the support system at TILF. You can start your record keeping and get that you know, audited to make sure that, oh, this is sufficient. This will prevent us from getting a non-compliance once we actually meet our three-year requirement. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, TILF um, has a quarterly publication and the most current one that just came out, it arrived yesterday in my mailbox, is all about transition. Um, I don't know if that's going to show up or not. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a great publication, it's a fun read, and mm -hmm. it talks about uh, transition, transitional farming. It talks, there's a bunch of interviews with different farmers who were in that process or what the, the speed bumps that they faced were when they decided to switch to organic from mm -hmm. conventional farming. Um, it's a great read. And it is actually online too. Okay. Um, so you don't even need a hard copy. So even though there's only six Hawaii farms, do they ever get represented in this? I don't know <laughs> if they have, I'll have to ask them. And I'll ask them when I'm out doing my inspections this year. And and what do you what is your feeling in terms like I guess um, either nationwide or even internationally are there more farms that are going through this transition? Yeah, um, I mean, th right now I mean I think within the U.S. it's only like one percent of our ag land is actually organic, which is sad. Yeah. But the the number of people who who are buying organic is increasing at a huge rate. Something yeah. like. Oh, I don't want to say a number and be wrong. <laughs> it's more than 10%. <laughs> oh, we make up numbers all the time. It's okay. <laughs> I don't want someone fact-checking yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She was off by a percent. Uh. Um, but so that people, people are becoming more and more educated. They want clean food. They want food that's good for the environment, good for their families, good for their body. They are becoming more and more willing to spend the money now to buy organic as opposed to spending it later on medical bills. Mm -hmm. um, and so the demand for organics is growing huge, which is great. Um, and so one of the things TILT is doing is putting these programs in place, like the transitional certification, to help farms kind of start meeting that demand and help the small farms get off the ground and be able to supply organic produce. So, um, Diane, I want to hear a little bit about your background. How did you become a certifier? Is this um, something you went to school for and you're like, yep, I want to be an organic certifier? No. <laughs> um, I went to school in central Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, I went to Bucknell and my background was environmental science and French. Okay. And when I moved to San Diego in 2007, you know, recession, no jobs to be had. Mm -hmm. And there happened to be an organic certifier there who needed a French speaker. And at that point in life, I could speak French. <laughs> <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot speak French anymore, but at that point I could. Um, and they needed a French speaker to help with the Canadian clients, mm. to, to help with that. Um, and I had the, the lab background and the environmental science background that worked well for them and um, kind of the foot in the door and I fell in love with it and just started realizing how big an impact it has and I remember reading through the regulation, you know, it was my first week of work nine years ago, reading through the regulation and some of the rules I'm saying, well, of course that's a rule, like why would, why would they have to write that into the organic regulation, like isn't that just required for all agriculture? Yeah. No, no, it's not required for all agriculture. Conventional agriculture allows that thing to happen that's scary and um, just 
all different things down the line. I was yeah. like, oh, this is, this is really important, and we're making a difference, and looking at the process and realizing where the holes were, but also where it, where it was really strong, mm -hmm. and realizing through, through my work in organic certification that, yeah, I can, I can trust if something says organic that it's legit, yeah. and I can trust that everyone is getting inspected every year, and that they're getting better and better every year, and the program's been in place for long enough now that it's, it's really become incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I feel very, very proud to be working for an organic certifier, and I love Oregon Tilth. Um, I love their mission, and they um, they have they have a structure that is incredibly supportive of small farmers, which okay. I appreciate. Um, like and in, in wh which way? Well, what, what do you Tilth mean by that? Tilth is Tilth is the third largest organic certifier in the U.S. Okay. Um, but one of the things that makes them particularly unique is that a lot of the certifiers out there really focus just on the farm side of things or just on the processing side of things. And Tilt is split almost 50-50. Mm -hmm. So we're really certifying farm to fork, mm -hmm. um, which is it's great for, for our clients because we've got a, you know, a producer search engine on our website where mm -hmm. you can say, oh, well, I need to find organic broccoli. And mm -hmm. you can type that in. You can find a bunch of farms that grow organic broccoli that are certified by Oregon Health. And it kind of helps connect all those dots. It helps them stay you know, connected, which is nice. That's it. We actually uh, have 60 seconds left, so that ends our time here. I didn't get through all my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it wasn't going to be enough time. <laughs> That's awesome. So thank you so much for coming on thank and so uh, letting us learn me. more about this specific certification company. i um, glad to hear you guys are working with six different farms here and hopefully with this new legislation and program to kind of refund that uh, money spent on transition and, and being certified that we'll see more of that. I hope so. So thank you so much for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. Aloha. Is that something you don't it's really talk about? Okay. It's, Which it's, other part?